Welcome to the Industrial Talk Podcast with Scott McKenzie. Scott is a passionate industry professional dedicated to transferring cutting-edge, industry-focused innovations and trends while highlighting the men and women who keep the world moving. So put on your hard hat, grab your work boots, and let's go. All right, once again, we're broadcasting live from the IoT Solutions World Congress here in Barcelona, Spain. It is 2023, and I want to make sure that you put this on your calendar for next year. If you're not here, you need to be here because there are a lot of great professionals looking to solve problems and collaborate with you, and you need to be in this digital transformation journey. You just must be. So come here, IoT Solutions World Congress. And of course, it's in Barcelona. That never disappoints. All right, you're listening to Industrial Talk. You know about it. It is a platform dedicated to industrial professionals all around the world because you're bold, brave, you dare greatly, you're changing lives, you're solving problems, and therefore, we celebrate you on this particular podcast. So always sign up, be ready. All right, in the hot seat. Michael Greaves? Greaves. Greaves. Okay, right off the bat, screwed it up. But it doesn't matter because he came up with the concept of digital twin, right? I did. Yes. There it is. Greaves, in the hot seat. Let's get cracking. Yeah. How often have you been here? So this is my first time in Barcelona, although I did do a session for the IoT when it was COVID time, virtually, so. Okay. It's sort of odd. You, you've got this whole digital twin background. How long has it been around? How when it, when it, Okay. I'll, I'll just go in. We're not going into, the, like, give us a little background because, no, we're not going to do that. But we are going to go into the fact that, like, What's the genesis? Were you just sort of sitting around and then all of a sudden, wouldn't it be great to have a digital representation of? Yeah, well, so so, it, it, so I've been in the computer industry since I was 16 years old. I mean, so we're and talking. he's 45 right now. Just yeah, to I'm over 70. So, so I mean, we had mainframes that, that your watch would outperform at the moment. But, but I'd always had the idea that information, you could basically have information look different than the physical thing so so if I have your water bottle uh, and I want to know the measurements I got to basically I got to have that water bottle but when I have a digital twin I can basically just have the information about it okay so so you could strip the information off of things and have it as a separate thing and so I had a, I had a, a fairly large computer company um, in the uh, in fact started in the 80s and I took a public in the 90s and then retired because I was tired of playing with the lawyers and uh, accounts. It's it's a grind. It's a yeah. grinder. That's a whole other conversation. That I is. understand the pain. Yes. So so I retired. I fell miserably at retirement, um, and I went back and had got my doctorate and had thought about this. Well, this is a cool idea. And so so I, I graduated. I got uh, was at the University of Michigan. And I came up and said, well, here's the model. Here you have the physical thing, you have the virtual thing, and then you connect it by taking data from the virtual world or the physical world to populate the, the virtual world. And then you can use that information. Because my core premise is information is a replacement for wasted resources. For any task that I have, I can divide it into two pieces if I was omniscient and omnipotent. And if you ask my wife, she'll tell you I'm not either. Um, but I know but, that too. Yeah, you, you probably yeah. have. Wow, well, you're just you're just chirping my language there. <laughs> yeah. So so if so if I if I what I want to do is use so so most of life is is basically goal oriented, minimizing resources, right? And that's what we what humans yep. want to do. Yep. Everything above that is wasted. Okay. I can take information. I can't replace the physical resources I need to actually do the minimum amount to, of that. But it can be a replacement for all the wasted resources. So, so the examples I use. Yeah, are, give me an example. So, so, so if I'm designing up a, a product and it's never going to work, gee, it would be nice to know that before I spend all that money. Or I'm manufacturing something that's out. Or I'm trying to get three kids to practices and they've changed the practice location and they've canceled one of the practices. All right. So, so those kind of tasks I can use information to replace wasted resources. So that's why I want to do that. That's why I want to basically create this digital twin that has information so I can say, hey, stupid, don't do that because it's not going to work. But did you have at that time, you're saying, okay, I got it. Here's, 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 here's the physical, let's say that asset, physical asset. Right. I have to place devices on that. I have to, I have to get data from that physical right. to go over here. Right. It's that point of data. 
then being able to put it here. Yes. Was that, I mean, did that exist? Well, so so not, interesting question. So 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 in theory, so 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 at a minimum, I've got humans who could say, okay, that's it. Here it is. It it's over five. There. Right. Exactly. And that's sort of what we've done since time immemorial. How many things are in the warehouse, Joe? And and so 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 initially, IoT didn't exist at the time. It didn't. Yeah. But but. We did have sensors. I mean, we've had we've TLCs. Had kind of, you had, yeah, you had, you had, we did yeah. have so that. So I so I figured we can get the data in some fashion. Now, IoT has enabled this dramatically uh, by having sensors and communications, and and too often I don't think we talk about the digital twin. The physical twin is pretty damn important because uh, the physical world trumps the virtual world every day. So so we've got to get yeah. that information out, and we've got to send it over to the virtual world so that I can then use that information to not waste resources in the physical world. And, and, and there has to be this level of confidence. You can't just send garbage from the physical to the digital and then say, Absolutely oh not. my gosh, somebody's going to get into trouble and it's not going to be pretty. Yeah, so, 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 so the validity of the data and the fact that the virtual world needs to try to basically reflect the physical world is Real time. important. Right. So you're going to tell me you're designing a, 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 a digital carpet in your, uh, in your virtual world, a flying carpet, you know, ain't going to fly because yeah. you can't can't do that. So you're right. That you know the the accuracy of reflecting the physical world. So this is not a video game where you can do all kinds of yeah. things. Yeah. It actually needs to reflect the, the 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 environment of the of the virtual world has to reflect the physical world. It's got to have great fatality of that. It, it, yes, and and what makes it so spectacular is the simple fact that once you you crack that egg once you have a high level of confidence in that that virtual representation of the physical world then your ability to simulate play around over here tweak do whatever is necessary to optimize whatever that digital world looks like then to achieve and and, and put it in the physical so you, you achieve that over here with confidence and what the great thing is is you talked about time machines i got a time machine now yeah, I, I don't have to have the same time. Yeah. I can run backward in time. I can run forward yes. in time. And so, so where I view this as going is that the virtual world is a crystal ball into the future. So at every time zero, I'm going to collect the information from what's happening in the physical world, send it over, and run a simulation to say what's going to happen. And it's going to come back and say, okay, there's a 80% chance that you're going to have a crash because uh, this is going to break on you, okay? There, and it's going to happen in four weeks. There's a 90% chance that it's going to happen in six weeks. So it's going to give you percentages of things that are going to happen. And then you, if you're not an idiot, are going to pay attention to that and and not do that. So so a, a lot of, say, Industry 4.0 was about, I'm going, to stop, I'm going to decrease the time between having a problem and having to remediate that problem. My perspective is, I don't want to have a problem. I want to predict it's going to happen. And when I see that, go fix it before it happens. And, and you're, you're, you're talking that the analytic capabilities, that increased probability, that increased confidence of saying, okay, here's this data, run it. Okay, now I'm going to change the parameters, run it. And then I'm going to continue to hone that so that it makes sense. And are we talking about this, this simulation capabilities within your digital representation that it's going to continue to sort of learn a little bit more get a little bit more advanced and then just by virtue of it the real world reaps the benefit of that optimization so, so one of my digital twin types is what i call the digital twin aggregate so if i get the, there you go the bigger the population i get of stuff that happened the better data that i have about when this when i see this sensor reading and this sensor reading and this sensor reading i'm going to have this problem I now I keep honing that information, the data, to basically create better and better models, if you will, of what's going to happen when I see those sorts of things. It's, it's exciting. Don't get me wrong. I, I, get, I get all geeky about the whole thing. Let me ask this question. So let's say I am, I've got my digital representation of this motor. Whatever. I don't okay. Know. Motor X Y Z. Right. It's a common motor X Y Z. It is in this environment. the The environment is a moderate environment. Whatever. It's you've got information about motor X Y Z in this environment. Is there value of that data? Because 
Acme company over here has motor XYZ, and I want to do the same thing over there. Or you see what I'm getting at? Data is all. And, and so, so there's sort of two pieces to this. Okay, is I need a digital twin of the motor, and I need a digital twin of, of the environment the behavior. There you go. And so, so I want both of those uh, things. And again, the more data I collect, okay, the better I can generate information. So remember, my information is a replacement for wasting resources. So, so, I, so that's where my value is: is being able to process this data, and be able to then draw. So, so, so I really like causation. But I'll settle for correlation. But but again, let's say now now all of a sudden you're you're collecting all this valuable information on that asset, that motor. And I know that that motor is a common motor that is used in other processes around the world, whatever. Right. Do you have do you have some sort of can you I hate to say it, sell the intellect sell that information to say, hey, we got the solution to make that motor run efficiency. Do it this way. Here you go. So, so what I talked about at the panel discussion today was I said, look, there's two uses of this, of this digital twin. One is within your organization to to be more effective and efficient. Yep. The second is a new revenue stream. So I, I, there it is. So I so I so I can monetize that. Uh, and and it's happening today. I mean, for example, let's take a jet engine manufacturer. Okay. An airline only has a certain amount of jet engines, all right? The jet engine manufacturer could have the data from all those engines and say to the airline, you want better you want better data about, you know, keeping those engines up? I'll sell you too. But it makes sense. Because there's there's a there's a benefit of that, right? Absolutely. We're talking value. Value, benefit uh, let's just say safety in general. I agree. And and of course the the, the, the revenue associated with it is that you're insuring based off of data, that that asset stays productive as much as it possibly can, and then you can perform the maintenance of whatever it is. It's like, hey, I see the data is doing this, you know, this weather, whatever whatever the points are, boom, I'm going to do some maintenance on it at the optimal time. Absolutely. The optimal time is when it's going to fail. In the, so, so again, this is, my, oh. this is my crystal ball. I'm looking at it and saying, this is going to fail in two weeks. I'm going to fix it tomorrow. That's right. And... and, and, and and I've, I've thought through this too. So if I'm the treatment of maintenance dollars, right? I have maintenance. I budget that maintenance. The maintenance from a financial treatment of that is a one for one, uh, minus up here, minus down at the bottom, right? It's different than capital. You're gonna do, and there's there are companies that want to sweat the asset. Let, you know, do not do in, uh, a maintenance. But if you had that crystal ball, you sweat the asset. And you perform maintenance right at that optimal time. That's significant value. Huge, there's huge, huge. You know, we huge. do periodic maintenance, so some stuff gets fixed before it breaks, yeah. and some stuff gets after. You know, and so so if I could only fix it when it was going to break, I'd save a huge amount. Of I, I don't even know what the value is on that, but, but it is. It's massive. Well, let me tell you, when it talks, you're talking about safety, it's priceless. I mean, if I could save human lives. What value? We do put value on that, but but from my perspective, is I, I could save somebody's life on that. I want to do that. And it does. It doesn't even address the fact that when when you let's say you do planned maintenance, right? Now it's time to do this motor. Now it's time to do this motor, and so on. You you run the risk of introducing flaws in your sure. action, right, You're right there. Absolutely. So I, I don't know. And you know it's going to get there. It is. It is. It's going to get there. We're, and we're, then, we're, we're, we're having so much computing coming online. We are going to. We're. We, we. You know. I predict that. You know. We just passed 80 billion transistors on a chip or equivalent. By 2030, it's about six trillion. So. So. Ho 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 ho! Don't gloss over that data. What, what did you just say? So. So if you're familiar with Moore's law, we started off with 2K in the 70s. We just passed 80 billion transistors on a chip. In uh, okay. this last year. My projections is if I follow that curve by 2030. I have six trillion transistors on a chip, 128 times increase. And by 2040, about 100, 120, 130 trillion transistors on a chip. We're having huge amounts of computing coming online. Oh, my, 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 my head can't wrap around that. Nobody's can. And by the way, if we get to quantum computing, all bets are oh, off. All bets are <laughs> off. You're, that's a whole other conversation. That's right. And it's going to get, it's going to happen. Uh, so, come on, talk to me, tell me. 
So, You're so, the digital twin guy. So, so I think that there will be specific problems quantum computing. General purpose quantum computing is really tough. And, and there's some theories that says you can't get there from here. And that we're not real anyway if we do. So, <laughs> sorry. No, no. <laughs> you, because everybody, there's, there's, there's some major cabbage being invested in quantum computing. Major cabbage. Uh, yeah, and so I say, I, I think for some special purpose problems, you'll be able to use qubits to do that. But general purpose, you know, the computers we have today, I don't know necessarily know. The error correction problem is a big problem. <laughs> there you go. Well, you are being celebrated here at uh, IFT Solutions World Congress. You're, you're uh, receiving an award. How come you're receiving an award? I have no idea. Liar. You're a liar. <laughs> I have no idea. Because they're celebrating the fact that you are all a part of that uh, digital twin. You are the, the dude. Uh, that, that certainly could figure into and this. And I'm going to be announcing you up, up on the stage. Well, that'd be good. I mean. Yeah, you'll feel comfortable. See, you ever feel comfortable. I feel, right hey, you know, you know, you <laughs> know. So, so, now that we're, we're awarding you. Are you still going to be hanging out with the Digital Twin Consortium? Absolutely. I, I think it's the hottest thing out there. It's going to change how we do things in the world. Because because you're 50, what, three? you got many years left. Yeah, try 73. No, I'm not going to do that. You're lying there. Do you have any way of people getting in contact with you and said, hey, I want to be a part of the, the consortium. I want to... I want to know more. I want to be a part and have these conversations. What, what do we do? So so they can look up the Digital Consortium, and uh, my friend Dan Isaacs would be happy to talk to him. There you go. There it is. We're going to have all that uh, contact information out on Industrial Talk, so fear not. It'll be a part of this gents' uh, interview. Once again, you were fantastic. Well, thank you very much for having me. You're I, smarter than I am. Which um, I, I don't know wanted, about that. Don't ask my wife because I'm, I'm, that's a low bar. So FYI. let's not get the wives involved in this, all right? Okay, there you go. So mum's the word. All right. All right. Thank you very much for joining Industrial Talk. We, once again, are broadcasting from IoT Solutions World Congress 2023. You get to meet people like this gent right next door and, and really have great conversations. It's all about collaboration. It's all about having that innovative sort of vision on help solving problems. Come here. IoT Solutions World Congress. We're going to have all the contact information for him and, and many others out on Industrial Talk. We're going to wrap it up on the other side. Stay tuned. You're listening to the Industrial Talk Podcast Network. All right. Once again, thank you very much for joining Industrial Talk and thank you very much for your support of a platform. This platform that celebrates industry professionals because you are changing the world. You're helping people succeed. You're solving problems. You're collaborating and you're making the world a better place. That's why this platform is dedicated to you. Thank you to my, Dr. Michael Greaves. And if you're just, just right now, let's just lay it on the line right now. You need to be engaged. You need to connect with uh, Dr. Michael Greaves because the digital twin came from him. He's He is the pioneer. And, and it's here to stay. And it is constantly changing and, and becoming better. And it's because of people like you and others, but really, the genesis is Dr. Michael Greaves. So reach out to him. We'll have all the contact information, most definitely out on industrialtalk.com. One final point. Here's the deal. You need to go out to IoT Solutions World Congress. You need to, if you weren't there this year, you need to be there next year. It is expanding, it is growing, and it's constantly changing, and, and changing in, in the way of, of constantly evolving and innovating. And the, the companies and the individuals there are right at the tip of the sword in defining and helping companies get through this digital transformation and deploying that. It is, it's, it, come on, it's strategic. So IoT Solutions World Congress, as well as Object Management Group, Go out to omg.org. It's it, it it's all out there. You've got to educate, you got to collaborate, and you got to innovate. I say it all the time, but you got to hang out with people with Dr. Michaels, and uh, you you are going to change the world. Thank you very much. We're gonna have another great conversation coming from this event shortly, so stay tuned.